What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So I have a three-part question for you guys, all right? So the first question I want to ask you all is what is the greatest single season NBA team, in your opinion, in the history of the NBA? Okay? That's the first question. The second question I want to ask you all what is the greatest single season NBA team that you've seen with your own eyes, that you've watched since you've been watching basketball? Third question I want to ask you guys is what is the greatest single season NBA team that you've seen that was somehow derailed? Uh, lost in the earlier round to a team they shouldn't have lost to. Um, well, I'm not, I'm gonna get a lot of Nets fans on this one. Um, or a team that was decimated by injuries, Nets fans on this one. Or a team that somehow was just derailed. A team that looked destined to be at least in the finals or a threat, and somehow the team just didn't get it done. Well, to me, <clears throat> the greatest individual team in the history of the NBA from reading about basketball, just my opinion, is the 1966-67 Philadelphia 76ers. They went, at the time, a record 68-13 and during the regular season. And during the finals, they beat the San Francisco, uh, I think at the time they were the San Francisco Warriors, four games to two, despite Rick Barry uh, dropping 55 points in one of those games. And despite the fact that Rick Barry averaged, I believe in those finals, a then record 40.8 points per game. 40.8 points per game on top of the fact and during the regular season, he led the league in scoring, averaging 35.6 points per game, which is the highest scoring average ever for a white player. Um, that team, to me, was great offensively, great defensively. And uh, they did something that no other team had done during the entire Bill Russell uh, era, and that is prevent the Boston Celtics from making it to the finals. Every other year, they went to the finals. Even that one year that they didn't, other year they didn't go, they lost to the St. Louis Hawks in six in uh, seven games, I believe it was. They lost to the St. Louis Hawks in 1958. And it took a 50-point game from Bob Pettit to seal the deal. Every other year, they went to the finals, except for 1967. So that's something that they have. Uh, Will Chamberlain averaged 24 points, 24 rebounds, almost eight assists, shot over 60 percent from the floor. Unofficially, he blocked about 10 shots a game that year. Uh, so he racked up, he would have really racked up triple doubles had they counted them. And not only triple doubles, but quadruple doubles. Had they counted blocks back then. Not only him, he had Hal Greer averaging 22 points a game for that team. A top four shooting guard in the 1960s, in my opinion. Or three, depending on how you look at Oscar Robertson and Jerry West. I see them as, I see, to me, I, I look at Jerry West as a shooting guard, even though I know a lot of his career is actually listed as point guard. But anyway. You had Chet to Jet Walker, averaging almost 20 points a game for their team. You had the enforcer Luke Jackson, 6'9", 270 pounds, back in the 60s. Just fucking huge, brooding guy. Uh, he was averaging, uh, wasn't much of a score per se, but he did average 13 and 9. So he was giving you almost a double-double every, every single game. Then, of course, you had come off the bench Billy Cunningham, averaging almost 18 points a game coming off the bench. 
And as far as veterans, you had, uh, you know, the presence of Larry Costello, who obviously was going to become a coach later on. And uh, I believe their starting point guard was Wally Jones. And uh, they were voted the best team of the first 35 years of the NBA back in 1981. And they were still looked at as one of the great teams in the history of the NBA in the 50th anniversary team. But of course, as years have gone on, as the people who were part of that team died, those who covered those teams retired and passed away. And the new generation have no idea about the team. They're not looked upon with the same light and reverence as they once were. Well, that's my opinion as far as the greatest individual team in the history of the NBA. As far as the greatest team I've ever seen, no surprise to that. I'm a Bulls fan. I'm going to go to 1995-96 Chicago Bulls. 72-10. and 10. Um, Bulls fans were really amped up for that season. The year before that, Chicago Bulls were eliminated by the upstart Orlando Magic. It pissed a lot of us Bulls fans off seeing Horace Grant waving a towel and celebrating with the opposition team. We saw him as a fucking traitor who needed to be shut the fuck up and put in his place. So it was very unfortunate that in the next uh, year in the conference finals, he was injured. But still, it was sweet to see the Bulls sweep the Orlando Magic. The Bulls, like I said, went 72 and 10, you know, and uh, romped through the regular season in the playoffs. I believe they still have the record for the best winning percentage when you combine regular season and playoffs in the same season. They went 87 and 13 for an 87% win percentage. <clears throat> and then, as far as a team that seemed destined to go to the finals or at least be great and just get decimated. It's a unique situation. One, I think it's the biggest black eye in the history of the NBA. And that, of course, is the malice at the palace. That Pacer team, in my opinion, probably the championship. Because they beaten. Remember who went to the finals that year? It was the Pacers, excuse me, it was the Spurs and the Pistons. And I believe that Pacers team could have beaten both of those teams in a series. And most of those Pacers players, Reggie Miller would tell you that he believes that he lost a great opportunity to ride off in the sunset, sunset with a championship. Um, I mean, that team had a lot of good pieces, man. You had Reggie Miller, of course, but Reggie was in his last year, but still Reggie Miller was a, still a, a solid player. Not what he once was, but still solid. But remember, you had Ron Artest at the peak of his powers. You had Steven Jackson in his prime. Matter of fact, let's look at this roster. I'm trying to remember this team. You had Jermaine O'Neal, who everybody's forgotten about. Jermaine O'Neal was a dude that was going to give you like 25 and 10. I got an alert, alert saying something about print, uh, Queen Elizabeth canceled something. You know, I don't want to say it. You know, I don't like saying shit like this, but, you know, something going on with her. And you kind of know what's going on. You kind of know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, Middle World Peace was having a... a, a unbelievable, well, it was just seven games into the season before the suspension, but he was averaging 24.6 points, 6.4 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 1.7 uh, steals, almost one block. He was shooting 92% from the line, 50% uh, from the floor. Uh, Steven Jackson, before, this, uh, before his suspension, uh, I don't think he was suspended as long as uh, Metal World Peace, but he was averaging 19 points that year, five rebounds. Jamal Neal, 24 points, nine rebounds. You had Jamal Tinsley averaging 15. Reggie averaging 15. Dylan on that team. All this year, Scott Pollard. Uh, Curry, John Linder, uh Fred Jones. That was a good team, man. And I think that they could have contended for a championship. But obviously, 
those suspensions and the whole situation just decimated that team. And, uh, you know, guys got traded and that team was broken up. And what could have been, you know, a potential championship uh, sunset, riding off in the sunset situation with Reggie Miller, uh, never came to fruition. So that's my answers on that. But what do you think? Like, what what is what is the greatest team that you've ever seen? The greatest team in your opinion of in NBA history, and what is the greatest team that you've ever seen that didn't quite pan out? I don't get a lot of Nets fans in this shit. Tell me what you guys think.